Well, good day, everyone. I'm here uh, in my last couple of days as your Chief of Navy. Uh, early next week, I hand over the reins to Vice Admiral Tim Barrett, and I thought I'd just take the opportunity to share a couple of thoughts with you, uh, looking back over the last three and a bit years. And I thought there was no better place to do that from than from sea, and to spend a bit of time with some of you. And I'm on board a Runter, a ship very close to my heart, one that I commanded uh, over 12 years ago. It's been an enormous honour and privilege to lead you and to lead the Navy over the last three and a bit years. It's been three years of significant challenge. It's been three years of significant change. And I think it's been three years of significant achievement. In operations, we continue to kick goals in a very busy environment. We've got our 57th ship rotation to Operation Slipper. Uh, the work that the ships have done over the last three years has been fantastic. Counter piracy, maritime security, and you all would have seen Melbourne and Darwin and the work they've done recently in the counter narcotics work uh, with some significant uh, drug busts uh, in that theatre. We've had other operational tasks as well. Jules up in Papua New Guinea in landscape, Tobruk in the Philippines, providing much needed support after Super Typhoon Haiyan, Tobruk up in Papua New Guinea for Pacific Partnership, uh, our divers working hard in Render Safe, our droggies continuing to chart this vast continent of ours in the Hydra scheme. And of course, the relentless work that our people carry out day in, day out in Operation Resolute. And the last three years in Resolute have been significantly challenging. And I've been incredibly proud of the way that you have conducted yourselves over that three years as that operation has changed in character and some of the challenges uh, that you've confronted have changed as well. There's been three really important anniversaries for me in the last three years. The first, just after I took over, was the centenary of the naming of the Navy in 2011. That was a fairly low key event for us, but it was an important milestone. Last year, of course, was the centenary of the arrival of our first group of ships in 1913. And that led, of course, for us to run the International Fleet Review, which not only allowed us to commemorate an important moment in the nation's history, but to show what we can still do in putting together a series of exercises and a significant event for all of us. And the third anniversary was the 50th anniversary of the collision between Voyager and Melbourne in February of this year. That was a significant anniversary because it got together the survivors of that night and showed them that we as a Navy, A, remember them and B, still care about them. It was a significant event for them and the feedback that we got uh, was quite amazing. And my special thanks go to Chules and Creswell, the ship's companies of both Chules and Creswell, for the work that they did in putting that very special commemoration together. We have had some new capability come in in the last three years. Chules, of course, um, was purchased from the UK, brought into service. We have our Seahawk Romeos entering service as we speak and we're not far away from having the LHDs uh, in service as well. It's an exciting time. We have the AWDs not far down the track. We have the new oilers, 
potentially new frigates and new submarines, as well as new patrol boats, all in the offing. The Navy of 10 or 15 years' time will be very different, but it'll be built on the work that's being done now in preparing for the future. We've had some difficult things to deal with as well, uh, things that haven't gone well. But I think we've met those challenges head on. We've been firm in dealing with things that, frankly, weren't acceptable to us. We'll continue to do that because we all need to be held to account. In fact, one of the big things, one of the big messages that I had from you early on in my time was, when are we going to start holding people to account? I think we do that, and I think we do it fairly. In fact, as a professional organisation, we should want to be held to account. We have a high regard in the community, and that regard doesn't come easy. We have to keep working at that, and that regard is important. I think our culture has come a long way, particularly over the last five years of NGN. Our work uh, in areas of diversity, our work in areas of gender, what we're doing with White Ribbon, something we should be very proud of, to be the largest organisation in this country that's accredited as a White Ribbon workplace, leading in the fight against violence against women. The work we're doing with our Indigenous communities in the North, the work we're doing with Islamic outreach, the new cadet unit in Sydney, made up predominantly of Muslim kids, engaging a part of our community that we've not really had a lot to do with in the past and who remain an important part of our community. Why are we doing all this? We need to do this because we need to be representative of our community so we can have the support of that community when we need it. We don't know what we might be asked to do in the future. Our mission, as you know, is to fight and win at sea. It's not just a catch cry. It is the ultimate thing that we might be asked to do. And we have to be ready for that. And we have to keep working to make sure that we are ready for it. We live in an uncertain region and that means that we must be constantly ready. I uh, leave this job as proud as I could be of you and what you do and what you achieve on a daily basis. It is quite humbling uh, to lead an organisation like this with the wonderful people that are in it. I know that you will support uh, Vice Admiral Barrett as you've supported me. I am honoured to be able to hand over to him. He is a great man and a great leader and I think he will uh, do us all proud over the next four years of his time in command of the Navy. But well done. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your family's support because without them, none of us could do our job. And I'd like you to thank them for me. But above all, look after each other and stay safe.